Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women, and today we're talking about self-confidence leading to freedom of choice and how it can help to empower us as women and also the importance of not comparing ourselves to others. I'm joined in the studio by my guest, Rachel Smets, author, TEDx speaker, lecturer and cross-cultural trainer who specializes in helping people understand cultural nuances and also boosting their confidence levels so that they can achieve their goals. So welcome to the program, Rachel. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Anna, thank you. Well, it's a real pleasure, particularly everything to do with confidence mm -hmm. and not comparing each other, because I think that is so important. Mm -hmm. And it's something that so many people just, they forget about, they don't pay enough attention. But yeah. anyway, tell me, tell me about your work. And why did you become so interested in the whole area of confidence levels and the interpretation of cultural nuances and things like that? Mm. And how can we empower ourselves by owning these? Mm. Wow. Um, yes, let me start with, um, with the beginning. Why, yeah. why am I so interested in this? Because, because it's, it's something I learned myself. Um, let me tell you how I learned it. I started uh, moving abroad about uh, 15 years ago mm -hmm. and um, just took a big, big step. And I thought, I want to experience the world abroad and I don't want to stay in the same country the rest of my life. And especially, I don't want to grow old and what if I had done it? So I thought, okay, Rachel, <laughs> action, which was not so easy. I mean, there's a lot of stress and a lot of things and a lot of uncertainty. And I can tell you all about that, but I did it and I did it many times. And um, in the meantime, I've lived in about seven different countries, worked in all those countries. I speak six languages and I learned so much. And the thing I learned especially was that I grew my confidence all along the way because I was not so confident at first and I was even rather shy and yeah I had a lot of stress and keeping that going out of my comfort zone time and time and time again and, and taking action and overcoming fears basically I learned to turn all of those challenges into opportunities that and wonderful yeah, so so um, so that's how I became so interested. And then last year is also the reason why I wrote it. Now became a bestseller. Awaken your confidence. Why? Because I learned myself that I can grow my confidence, and I learned that everybody can build and boost their confidence step by step. And it takes work and it takes effort. And what I did in my book is I interviewed fifteen people that are very successful and we'll talk about success maybe later on but um in what they do and the the, the thing that i really really want to point out is that all those people around us that we think because you mentioned comparing that we think oh you know they have it all oh they're so confident oh they well actually in my book i can prove you that they had to learn it too just like me just like you just like right. so i just really want to say look you know if you're feeling less confident you can work at it and you can learn it and that's really really the message that I learned and that I want to give to the people and why do you think so many of us do lack self-confidence I mean does it come from our personal life professional life a mixture or is it something deeper mm. or more psychological um oh yeah that that's um i know it's a, a whole new subject but yeah, no 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 it's uh uh how do we well a, a lot of times it's it's a la it's a lack uh it can be it can be a lack of love it can be a lack of self-esteem it can be uh like you say you know from uh as a child being being maybe bullied or criticized or um having to deal with certain circumstances so for for everyone it's a different scenario yeah. Uh, the point is that whatever your background, yes. it's okay. And you are here right now, right here, and you can learn it. Yes. And going a little bit back to your, uh, I completely forgot to, to answer your question about um, differences in, in cultures, but it is related to this as well, because when I say 
It doesn't matter what background you have. It doesn't matter what past you have. It doesn't matter what culture you are in. Yes. It's also something that I learned with moving to all these different countries. I developed a passion in different cultures and I developed ways to deal with differences in cultures and adapt and, yeah. and, and be flexible. And, and so, yeah, so different cultures, different backgrounds, it doesn't matter. You are unique and you can learn to grow your confidence. Yeah. Do you find this is completely off subject, but do you find in the different countries where you've lived and worked, when you speak their language and you're with those people, you're actually almost a different person. So your confidence changes and your way of behaving and reacting changes. Um, I, yeah, well, you just touched, uh, without knowing, you touched another of my really, really hardcore passions, and that's languages. And um, I, like I said, I speak six. I'm even learning uh, seven now, Portuguese. And I just, not only I love it, but it has helped me so much. Like you say, when you speak the language, and it doesn't have to be fluent, if you speak the basic you can greet someone, you can, you, can, you can start with the basic language, you get such a different connection with another culture. Yeah. You really get like, oh, you know, they respect you, they, they admire for your effort. Yes. You get to hear and know things about people, of course, the more fluent you are, you can get into conversations that you can feel the emotion and you can really understand the people and their culture if yeah. you speak the language. So I'm, I'm all for motivating to learn other languages and i know it's not easy but that's with everything if you want to learn you have to put in the effort yes yeah and i think there's a big similarity with that um and the interaction you have even if it's in your your own language mm -hmm. with changing i mean and i think this is related to what you're saying about confidence and self-confidence because mm -hmm. if you manage to integrate a group and you can adapt to their way of thinking, not giving up yourself, but you can understand how they feel and how they react. Mm -hmm. I think that gives you more confidence as well. But mm -hmm. anyway, how do you think a lack of confidence impacts us as women, particularly in relation to the choices we make in life and career? Because I see so many women who are really talented, wonderful business women, but they still have a lack of confidence and it blocks them so why how do you think it it, it affects us in our career mm. um yeah i think a career and when you say personal i think about relationships for example um i think both ways um there's there's a lot of thoughts in my mind when you when, when i hear you talking about this subject because for us women i think also it really matters in what country you live and what culture you're from. I think that's, it's very, you know, um, there you are in France. I'm right now, I'm living in the Netherlands. Women have um, here, you know, good positions. You know, there, there is much more equality between men and women. So I think it helps your confidence. I really think that if you live in a culture where, you know, the man is still, you know, dominating and there's, you know, more, um, more of a distance and more of an inequality between men and women that's really really much harder and of course like you said it does affect your confidence um also in relationship maybe you choose you know a man with more dominant features if you're in such kind of culture so i think it it does affect us it does but it does also depend where we are and where we live and on the other hand confidence is something why are we staying in a, in a low self-confidence sometimes is, is because I mentioned, you know, maybe a lack of love or a lack of self-esteem. And, and then we try to, when we are in that position, we always try to seek our comfort zone mm -hmm. because that's safe. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, let me just do what I always did and not change too much because yeah, in all honesty, you know, um, change is the enemy of comfort. Change is, is the enemy here. So you, you just stay in your comfort zone where it's safe. But then, you know, the saying, when you do what you always did, you get what you always got. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what, what can we do to change and to increase our, our confidence? Ah, no, there is a good question. Um, I, uh, well, when I look at my, my, my book and, and I can, well, I wrote in my book, I actually uh, mentioned 11 confidence hacks, what I call them. And uh, so I can talk a lot about that, but let me just pick a few. Um, there's a lot of things you can do. And the thing is that 
you can do a mix of things. You yeah. can uh, pick up one and try to do something, you know, it, uh, and, and, then, and then do something else uh, a while after that. The, the, the key is, of course, that whatever I'm going to mention now is it involves practice. It involves repetition. Mm -hmm. So I can mention a few, but it's not going to work if you just try it out once. You know, you have to do it again and again and again, and it takes time, okay? There's no magic formula like drink this cocktail and then you have confidence. Take a pill and you grow, you know, <laughs> and that, that doesn't uh, work like that. But it all comes down to taking action, okay? Yeah. Whatever, um, when I mention step out of your comfort zone, do something that you're not familiar with, like me moving abroad, totally uncertain situations, unknown future. That's what scares most of us, you know, like what's going to happen if I do that? But if you don't do anything, nothing's going to change. Yeah. So building confidence always comes with, okay, take a step take action, maybe in business, maybe talking to someone you don't want to talk to, maybe picking up the phone and calling someone and saying something. Let's just say something really simple. Say no to someone. You're invited. You don't want to go learn to say no. It's a big step. It's sometimes very scary. You're, you know, but it's a very common daily thing. So try it, you know, try it and then take action. By doing that, a lot of times also we have um, a lot of fear, you know, anxiety, yeah. fear, fear of, um, yeah, I don't know, um, talking to someone or, or, but when you take action and you try to, yeah, at least try it, you overcome that fear. Yes. You cannot overcome fear if you don't try something. You know, if you don't change, if you sit back and don't do anything, you cannot overcome fear. If, yes. you know, like I'm a speaker now and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, oh, doing a presentation or standing on stage and it's so scary and I can't do it. And so what? They avoid it. I... I stand in front of a big audience. Is it scary? Yes. The first time? Yes, of course I, I feel that too. Yes. But if you do it and you do it again and again and again, again, the repetition, the fear melts away. Yeah, yeah. And what's your opinion of the fake it till you make it? Because I know there's a strong following for that idea that if you pretend you've got all the self-confidence, you actually do get it. Mm, yeah, I like that. I do. I do like that. And 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 um, the best example I can I can give is if you um, and I'm actually doing it while I'm talking. But if you stand up straight, right, and and you put your shoulders back and you put a smile on your face, how can you, you know, do all of that without feeling more confident and feeling better? Yes. You know, if you. Put your shoulders like you're sitting like little, little you know shoulders down and and your head down and and you crumble up in a little ball you feel yes. less i don't know less worth as if you know but if you think like hey you know like an athlete an athlete who's who's ready to 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 go and and perform and you put you know yourself up and your shoulders back and you and you smile how can you how can you not feel better then you yeah. know That's so awesome. absolutely i believe in that i do believe in that yeah no, I, I agree with you with that. If, particularly if I'm tired or lacking in energy or if I've got some topic I really don't want to do. What you say, standing up straight, putting your shoulders back, mm -hmm. putting your head up, having a smile, it gives you the extra energy. Yeah. And it really has, it makes such a difference. So if, by, I just want to add one thing, Anna, is that um, another thing, like now I just mentioned something which you can do with your behavior, but a lot you can do... Um, fake it till you make it with your thoughts. Yeah. Because another thing I describe also in my book is, you know, we always, I mean, we hear that a lot, you know, think positive thoughts. And I'm not, I'm not the person saying, oh, you know, life is rosy and everything is positive. No, not at all. But you can change your thoughts. Yes. You know, like you just mentioned, if you need to do something and you keep thinking, like, I, I, I have that sometimes, like, oh, I don't have time and I still have to do that and I can't do it and I don't know how to start it. And all of a sudden, I, 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 I really shout out, like, stop it, Rachel, because it's my thoughts. It's my thoughts leading to a, not, let's not do it because I can't make it anyway and I don't have time. And then I completely stop myself. I stop my thoughts and I'm like, okay, hold on. I have time. I can do this. And I change my thoughts. Yeah. yeah. And suddenly, suddenly it works so much better and it's much more pleasant too. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio.
moving on, what about authenticity? Mm -hmm. Because I think this, it, it covers both subjects. I mean, frequently we compare ourselves to others, which normally we compare ourselves negatively to others. Mm -hmm. and, and that decreases our confidence as well. Yeah. How does authenticity fit into all of this? If you're mm. a, a quieter person naturally or a, sh a shyer person, yeah. do you lose your authenticity by mm. boosting your confidence? What do you think about that? Oh, I love talking about this. Let me tell you why. Um, we are all unique. I mentioned that before. And um, um, we are all different from each other. And uh, well, when it comes to comparing yourself to others, something that's, by the way, completely human nature. So don't worry if you do that. We all do that. We all compare ourselves to others. Um, but there's a trick here. And I actually did an entire TEDx talk about the subject because it's so human and we do it. But the thing is, we feel so bad sometimes when we compare ourselves to others because we will always find someone who does something that is better than us. Um, so you can fill your days easily by comparing yourself to others. The key is, you know, what to do with it. And first of all, like you said, authenticity. We are unique. And the best example I can give you is this. Imagine a field of red tulips, let's say. Okay? An entire field with red tulips. And one tulip is yellow. Yes. One. Now, there's two things you can do. You can say, oh, look at that yellow tulip there. I mean, it's ruining the whole picture. Okay? Because everything is red and there's this yellow tulip. Yes. Or you can say, wow, look at that yellow tulip, you know, standing there, strong, confident. Just look how beautiful that is in that image. Yes. And that tulip is you, is yes. us. You know, we are all unique. And you can look at it and feel bad, or you can look at it and think, hey, I'm here too. And I, yes. and I deserve to be here. And I have the right to be here just like anybody else. Yeah. So that's the first thing, like believe in your authenticity, believe in yourself. So that's the first thing. Yeah, that's a beautiful image. Yeah. Beautiful image. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to try and find a photo of red oh, tulips with a yellow have, in the middle. I, yeah, it's easy to find, don't worry. I, uh, <laughs> but it's such a beautiful image to, to associate with ourselves and how to to make us remember that we are different we are you yeah yeah and the thing is that we always find we we okay we can just you know con endlessly find people who do things better than us but we should first of all realize what are our qualities okay everyone has qualities and we don't need to have i don't know how many degrees or whatever title no maybe you're a good uh, cook maybe you're a good mother maybe you're a good father it doesn't we all have qualities maybe you have a good sense of humor and you can you know we all have qualities. so stop for a moment and realize that you have your own unique qualities that's the very very first step and it's not an easy one we forget and we forget those small little successes, those small achievements. You know, you raised your children, maybe. You know, you, 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 we all have these small achievements, but we forget. Yes. It's good yeah. to stand still and, and look at that. Yeah. And I know it's, it's really easy just to forget to keep focused on what's really important to us yep. and what mm -hmm. makes us happy and comfortable mm -hmm. and fulfilled. Yep. So do you think that when we're trying to develop our careers and we're trying to work on our personal image, do you mm. think the risk of losing our true selves? I mean, it's mm. a little authenticity, but it's a little different. Yeah, 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 totally. No, the, the thing is, so the step one is the uniqueness and the authenticity. And then, uh, since we're, you know, talking about comparing ourselves, like I said, it's completely normal, okay? We all do it. Like, very easily to understand, you scroll down Facebook and what do you see? Dream holidays, perfectly fit bodies, amazing relationships, and we see all of those outside accomplishments. And we think, oh, they're so lucky. Oh, look at that. They have so much success. And we, we compare in an, and then we lose ourselves again. You know, we think like, oh, you know, they're better than us. But what we don't see is the reality behind it, behind all those pictures and all that success and all those images. There is, first of all, a lot of hard work yeah. because success just doesn't fall out of the sky. And it's not luck. It's hard work. And trust me, everyone has bad days. Yeah. Everyone's life is equally fucked up. You know, it's, it's something 
you know, we see the good stuff, but be honest. What do you post on Facebook? You post the good stuff. You don't, you're yeah. not going to post a bad thing. Yeah. No, but all the stress we don't see. So my message is when it comes to seeing at others, sure, look at others, but don't feel bad and realize that it's hard work for them, that they have bad days, that they have, you know, discussions, arguments, family issues, stress, work, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, and you know, yeah. How do you think, because with the, the examples you've given, we do fall into that trap of really yeah. thinking that what we see is the mm. reality and mm. it's not. Um, and I know one of the things that I'm particularly obsessed about is people who keep saying the m amount of hours they work and how busy they are. Mm. Um, and they seem to think that this is some kind of badge of honor, whereas I think it's the exact opposite. But mm. I know it's because their colleagues are saying it and their bosses are saying it. And so they fall into that sort of trap of I must work ha harder, I must work longer, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, that? We well, how do you think more than anything? We can move our focus onto our own vision mm. um, and be happy with that, yeah, rather than all the pressure from those around us. Because yeah. I, I have some amazing clients, I mean, really lovely, lovely clients, but they still, and even however intelligent, however successful, however capable, they still have this thing oh my God, I've got to be at the office at this time. I've got to stay until this time because otherwise I'm not successful. And they don't particularly want to. You know, they have other things they'd rather do, other ideas which are great for success, mm. but they have a problem moving their focus onto their own vision and letting go that that's around them. Yeah. What do you think we can do about that? Okay. I mean, it's all linked to gaining a new perspective and I know that you're a really strong believer in that mm. yeah um, yeah I, I'm, I'm even writing down a few things otherwise I'm gonna lose my thread it's it's a it, it's two things that I definitely want to mention okay first of all um, what you mentioned is you know don't lose yourself so the thing that I really want to say is okay what I just mentioned look at yourself right you are unique so do a lot of self-observation self-reflection yeah. so that every day you realize okay this is me these are my qualities and I am unique and I am you know good enough and yeah. that's that's the first step so self-reflection definitely the first step so observe yourself look at what you have this is important don't look at all the things that you want and all the things that others have but look at what you have okay the qualities that you have the work that you have the job that you have the the, the roof over your head it doesn't matter look at that so focus on that so self-reflection realize that you already have a lot okay because we always want and i want this and i want that but we have to stop for a moment and look at what we have then it's really important to have goals and to have dreams and to have plans. And that's another TEDx I did. You know, your, your dreams and goals are really important. But then take small steps. Yes. Okay? It doesn't just come, you know, take small steps. But if we always look at the end, you know, a lot of times we, we look at, okay, let's say there's 10 steps from step one to step 10. And uh, step 10 is your end goal. We often forget, you know, we look at step one and two and then 10, but we forget all the steps in between. Yes, yes. And that's important to remember that everyone, no matter who you look at, they all went through those steps. Yeah. And so take small steps. Okay. So that's really important. And, um, and then when it comes to when you see others, my, my big message is look at others. Of course, it's human. We compare ourselves to others, but don't feel bad about it yet be inspired by them yes and i will give you an example and that's 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 when i think okay comparing is human comparing is okay but when i compare myself to someone else i get inspired and i use it to build into my small steps let me give you an example i i you know a few years ago i looked at others you know and i, I saw trainers and speakers and international speakers and i and authors and I I really really wanted to be like them I wanted to, I wanted to be that too I wanted to be a trainer and a speaker and all of that 
and 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 so I became really inspired. And yeah. then I started, you know, I started small steps. I thought, okay, let me just contact them and, and, and talk to others. And I talked to, I don't know how many people, asking them tons of questions. How did you do it? What did you do? What are your steps? And I started, you know, building my website.